This is Gips with the Finding Genius Podcast, now a part of the Finding Genius Foundation, pending nonprofit with the IRS. Uh, today I have a returning guest, Dr. Bill Miller Jr. Uh, spoken to him a number of times and he and I talk actually pretty regularly. He's uh, very, very savvy, very interesting ideas about biology and evolution, et cetera. So I wanted to have him back because a topic that is passionate to him is uh, what what do our cells tell us about ourselves, our own existence, and our own biology? I know it's a seems strange at first, but we're going to get into the details. So, Bill, thanks for coming. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be on. Yeah. So what did you mean, first of all, when you say uh, cells can tell us something about ourselves? What does that mean? It means that we that modern science has completely reframed the way we look at cells. We now know that our cells are responsive, problem-solving and intelligent. And we're going to talk about all those things. And from that base, from this essential base that's different from just even two decades, two decades ago, there are a number of lessons that our cells can teach us. They provide us insight about ourselves. And the, there are multiple lessons that we can derive from them. They're all based within science. Uh, none of this is just theoretical. These are just basic scientific findings that, that are being applied uh, in, in a, an unusual manner. And what we learned by studying the cell in detail, it's magnif their magnificent complexities, is that there are central rules of engagement that extend across all biological sim systems and that they can provide us with an insight into how do we can conduct our lives, thoughts about how societies should live together collectively. And they offer through their engineering capacities, through their intelligent problem-solving interactions, they offer us new ways of looking at our own health and new new pathways to enhancing our well-being and improving our lives. Well, let's let's break that down. What what does that mean? Like, what what can cells teach us about working together versus just killing each other or fighting endlessly? You know, let's let's start with that. Well, they have specific rules of engagement that we're going to talk about in a minute, and uh, we're going to call them the four C's. And uh, the four C's are those uh, specific things that cells do together to form the living compact that they do that make us the seamless beings. We are cellular beings. No matter what we think about ourselves, we are cellular beings. And the most important thing, that the way I'd like us to start talking about this, Rich, is that the major difference from the past to the present is that none of our cells, just like, our, just like we are ourselves, are, are machines. And I'm insisting that we think about this for a minute because biology was framed up until just about two decades ago into the concept that we're living machines. And in fact, many, many biologists still right, believe yeah. that. Oh, yeah, and, I hear it all the time. Yep. Yeah, I know. And here's it, it's shocking when you can go to the literature and look at the, that the enormous amount of basic science that teaches us that our cells are intelligent. Let me explain first, because it's just interesting to me. How did the concept that, that living things are machine become so fashionable? Well, it actually goes back to the 16th and 17th centuries. There was a, a point in time when European royalty got fascinated with very elaborate mechanical contrivance. So there were a terrific uh, craftsmen that could make uh, forms of animated dolls and they would parade that they would actually travel them from from European court to court and give a show. And these were highly complicated machines that were like animated dolls. They could read, they could write, they could perform music, they could do a drawing, they could they could work together in unison in, in a sort of a tableau. There were uh, if you think of a cuckoo clock where they, you can have a little bit of coordinated action, think of something that's immensely more, more elaborate. These things were so remarkable and so unlike anything else that had been seen before that philosophers like Rene Descartes came to the conclusion that maybe we should just regard everything that's living as some kind of form of a complex machine. But now we know that that concept of the, of the living machine is entirely misplaced, and here's why. Every single cell is intelligent. Every single cell of your body is intelligent and mine. What does that mean at, at the level of a cell? It's not intelligence like we have. You know, cells aren't contacting their, each other for Tinder dates, but they have cells, they have intelligences that matter in their own scope. They can learn, they have memory, 